What's going on everybody? It's your boy Do with Dan back at it again in the garage. The shop, the Dan cave, the, the Dan the lair? I don't know. I still haven't really found out a good name for this place. I, a part of me still thinks that Dan Cave is great, but the other part of me is like, nah. The Mustang. We have a lot of stuff to do today. Uh, in today's video, I don't have a specific goal in mind other than basically just start chopping and making some plans. I, I have made an order. I've bought about $1,000 worth of steel because I know I'm going to be messing up and stuff like that. This is only 80 feet of tubing. Uh, we're going to need way more than this. I know this looks like a lot. This is four 20 foot sections of inch and three quarter, inch and three quarter diameter plus 0 0.120 inner diet. OD? I don't know. Wall thickness. 0 0.120 wall thickness. That's what it is. And then I also got a couple sheets. I think I got three sheets of this, which is 16 gauge. Uh, this is what I'm gonna be using to make my, my floor pans out of and stuff like that. I do have more metal on the way. They didn't deliver it today. I guess they're like, hey, we don't have it, but we thought we had it. So we'll send it to you tomorrow. So it is what it is. But I think I can still start doing stuff today with what I have. All right, so now let's get into the meat of today's video. Let's talk about this. I told you guys in the previous video, I'm gonna be making essentially like uh, a mixture of like a roll cage and a tube chassis. That's essentially what a tube chassis is. It's, it's a tube chassis, I guess. But I'm also gonna be using square stock to make my own frame rail and stuff like that. Let's let's take a peek. Let's take a peek. I do have to set up some stuff just real quick. I got a new vice for my bench. I got to set up my tube bender, which is technically already set up, but I haven't showed you guys me setting it up, so therefore it didn't happen. But other than that, we're pretty much ready to rock and roll. I also have changed the way my layout of my shop right now. I know I had the 73 parked over here. I think this is kind of where I'm going to be doing the fabricating side of stuff for for right now. Let's uh, let's 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 make some plans. All right, so let me tell you guys my, my idea. Basically, what I'd like to do is uh, relocate the lift points. Uh, right now, they're sitting on the pinch welds, which is normally okay for most cars, but uh, this is not okay. And this is already, it's bowing out from the lift. And it's fine for right now, but I'm gonna be doing like a whole lot of cutting, and I don't want this thing to follow me, because that would pretty much, that'd pretty much be bad. So, my goal is to cut out the floor pan, first of all. I forgot my brake lines and fuel lines, so I'm gonna rip these out. Cut out the floor pans, and just start cleaning up the metal on the insides of where like your pinch welds would normally meet, and then probably add some new steel there, kind of tack it all together, and then start building the tube chassis, basically, around the bottom and then go from there. Make some solid mounting points to the body and then basically build the chassis on the inside of the car piece by piece. And that way I can kind of like jig everything and, and make sure everything's nice and square. At least that's the plan, who knows? Things, things are gonna change for sure. All right, but before we can get started on this, I'm gonna set up the shop, just quickly set up the tube bender, set up my vise and kind of just make sure everything's ready and then we'll get cranking on this mode. Now before I can cut out the floor pan, I am gonna remove these brake lines and fuel lines because, well gas, you know, if you cut through these lines and there's gas in them, and there's a bunch of sparks on them, the car's gonna go up in falames, which is, uh, which is flames. It's gonna go up in flames. No more fuel lines, no more brake lines, nothing stopping us from cutting. So I'm gonna move the jack points just to the suspension where it's gonna be fine. Uh, I think what I'll probably end up doing is, is cutting the whole car out eventually about this point right here, leave this in for right now, run my two by four steel all the way back and connect it with this right here. I'll just leave it attached to here for right now until I'm ready to tackle this. I'll have to pull all, these, all the suspension out and I'll have to jig all the, uh, the suspension linkages where they need to be and stuff like that. So I'll cut it there and then I'll, I'll basically add on to it from there uh, in a safe way by adding spacers on either side that are well, like fillet welds. It'll be super strong. Then I'll also cut the frame rails in a way to where they match up with this and I'll, I'll do that right as well. But that leaves us, like I said, with this problem with this, this is still eaten out. So let's reposition the jack points and then start cutting out the floor. Thank you. 
so I found some like decent mounts for the uh, for the jack points. This <laughs> this whole carriage right here for the rear suspension, which is pretty much eaten away anyway. I don't know how it's it's managed to. It, it seems to be doing here just fine. So let's uh, let's risk our lives with that. So for sake of ease, I think. I'm gonna use the old plasma cutter. I haven't used the plasma cutter in forever, and uh, I've got my I got my small air compressor here because I can't I can't really afford a big one right now. I, I do need a big one for the shop. I really do. But with with the way like things have been budgeting, I just can't I just can't pull it off. So I'm gonna have to use my grandpa's little one. But this thing is more than enough to power the uh, the plasma cutter, which is fine. Uh, but this is the Hypertherm. Uh, I think this is the X, yeah XP30. This thing has actually done tons. It's been such a kick-ass little plasma cutter. Hypertherm does nothing but make plasma cutters, and I've got nothing but nice things to say about this particular one. It'll do like half inch steel, no problem. Uh, three, three quarter inches or it starts to kind of bog down a little bit, but yeah. Plan of attack number one, we're gonna see if this works. So without having to just completely detach the body and create a rotisserie and, and do all sorts of weird shit. So I think the best thing to do for me to, is to build the frame around the inside of this and then just kind of like slowly start making supports for it here and there in the car and then just all, all of a sudden it'll be one big piece. I think that's gonna be the best way, at least for me, I don't know. First things first is I'm gonna take the plasma cutter and, and just cut out this whole floor pan all the way up to uh, basically where the frame rails would would start to like curve upwards for the rest of the supports the rear frame rails start on the back side of this thing somewhere so I'm not gonna bother messing with this thing right now so what I think I'll do is just kind of cut this section out here the whole way because it's already it's eaten through and busted up and then replace it with some uh, with some steel that I'm gonna use for my floor pans just replace a nice big piece of steel there run a piece of steel tube that'll run from here and then that'll start our tube chassis and we'll build off of it from there. We'll start building our cage. That's when we'll start using a lot of math. I got my protractors handy. Now, since I am gonna be using the plasma cutter, uh, this is probably one of those things where I should wear a respirator, but I can't get a hold of any of them because this whole coronavirus shit, so thanks for killing me. I'm just gonna put my fan in the, in the driver's side and have it blow air out. I've got my front door and my back door open. Giggity, giggity. So it should just, it should, it should be plenty. Should be plenty air, should be good enough. Now we're about to get into some serious shit. There's a lot of rules that go into building a tube chassis, and I'll let you guys know my experience. I really don't have that much. I've like half-assed built stuff and made frames here and there, and, and just done general bumper making out of like steel and stuff like that. Nothing I've ever done has been like this structural for sure. However, I will say this, I've been doing a lot of research and a lot of just information collecting. And there's two YouTubers out there right now who have fabrication tutorials and information that I'm gonna direct you guys to because I don't want to say the wrong thing and get you guys like, damn, dude, I almost died because your stupid video, Dan. Not what I want. Uh, the two YouTubers I'm referring to is the Fabrication Series. I've been watching him for a long time. His YouTube videos have taught me how to tube bend or at least kind of understand the principles of tube bending because believe it or not, like this stuff is actually really complicated. It took a lot of math for me to learn that. And uh, the Fabrication Forum, I believe, this guy right here, for sure. They just have tons of YouTube videos that you guys can source and gather information on. So rather than me trying to get like caught up in all the details, how to do this and how to do that, I'm gonna kind of link their channels and be like, hey, go watch some of these guys' videos. It's gonna be way better information than I'm presenting you guys. And a lot of part about fabrication is making sure things don't warp and bend because you have, when you're welding or cutting or anything like that, things are under tension, things are under heat. I'm almost positive since this is so rusted away and whatnot, there's no structure to it, that uh, when I start cutting it, it's, it's not gonna lose square it's because it's probably not square anyway so I'm not super worried about jigging it up for the floor pans but when we do some of the other stuff like when we start cutting away the firewall and the front end for the tube chassis and stuff like that I'm gonna be using hella jigs and I'm gonna go over that with you guys when it comes time for just doing this floor pan piece we should be okay because you can replace floor pans without having to jig anything or having to structurally like weld anything together so I'm not worried. All right, plasma cutters, let's talk about those for a brief moment. Basically, plasma cutters are just like welders except the opposite. They do create an arc. Do you have to wear goggles because they do create uh, the stuff that hurts your eyes, you know, that big blue flashy stuff you're not supposed to look at? And it's basically like magic, you know? You, you do have a, you have a ground just like you have a welder. You clip that on and then you just you just cut. Depending on the type of plasma cutter, it can cut through all kinds of stuff. Aluminum, steel, however many thickness, etc. This one, in particular, does run on both uh, 110, using this adapter, and 220. I'm gonna say it, if you're gonna get a plasma cutter, go ahead and get 220 and set up the, the shop. It's actually pretty cheap, but installing a plug's like 100 bucks or so. You'll just be way happier, trust me, on that. And they do also require a hookup for gas or air. You can run gas with a plasma cutter. I, I can't remember what gas, uh, but you can also use a compressor, an air compressor. And uh, you don't have to have a whole lot. I think it's as long as, for that one, I think as long as you can output like 50 or 70 PSI, something like that, at one time, or maybe it's 90. A cut through whatever you want, with whatever your heart's content. So I'm gonna get my air compressor hooked it up. All right, 
plasma cutter on. I'm gonna set it at 25, because that's what I feel like. I did find out there is a bunch of water in this old ass air compressor. Since I'm getting new torch tips anyway, it's not that big of a deal. And since I'm just cutting out the floor pans, it's okay. But definitely having moisture in your air compressor, break your tips and shit, all right? Up until now, everything has been reversible. Now it's time to cut a floor pan out. And our torch tips looking really rough, but since these cuts don't need to be clean, I'm not gonna worry about it. I, I need to get some new torch tips for my, for my torch. I'm gonna interrupt on myself real quick on this scene. So one thing that I didn't really realize that was happening was that once I started getting to the rustier areas, I was having a trouble sparking an arc the same way a welder would. That's why you clean up a weld when you get ready to weld it. So what was actually happening, instead of cutting the rust, it was melting up in these big, hot, molten liquid balls and dropping them right on my epoxy floor. And yeah, kind of ruined them. So yeah, plasma cutters don't work great on rust. Look at all that rust. That's just from this floor pan over here. All right, I'm probably gonna kill it with the uh, with the plasma cutter right now. It made sense to me at the time thinking that like, because this floor pan was so thin and rusty, plasma cutter would blow right through it. But it makes sense why it doesn't work as good. If you don't have a good connection, you can't make a good arc, you know? In hindsight, it seems obvious now, after I spent a good bit of time with the plasma cutter on this thing, I think it's time to just go straight to the Sawzall. That was, uh, unfortunately, way easier. All right, so this is basically what I wanted because I just wanted to expose this piece. I wanted to expose this inner uh, door jam, I guess, if you want to call it that, so I could kind of uh, take a look at our edges here, our seams, figure out the areas that are definitely going to need patching. Like, all of this is pretty much unusable right here, this exterior piece. This, yeah, this is all going to have to be cut out. I mean, I'm, I'll probably even, uh, I'm going to cut the firewall out and do that too. But I need a good place to start, and this seems like a great place. So I think I'm going to cut along the edges here, remove this entire bottom piece and then just weld in a new piece of metal there piece by piece keep doing that until i'm satisfied what do you think once i have my bottom rails i can build a hoop that'll basically be the basis of which we do the tubular front end and we can build off of there and do the cage so yeah mount a piece of tube here and this will start our our bottom of our tube chassis And I thought about trying to save this pinch weld, uh, just because, why not, you know? But I think what's gonna be better for me and whoever ends up buying this car in the future is if uh, I just go ahead and completely eliminate the pinch weld. Since I'm reinforcing this car so much, I'll just go ahead and eliminate the pinch weld. You're not gonna lift it on that anyway anymore. So I think I'm just gonna cut along the seams, get rid of the pinch weld, and then make a replacement piece of metal that'll go over. It'll kind of just fold over and tack on the bottom. 
I haven't decided if I'm gonna put the tube inside of here, inside of the side rails and, and build off of that. So it's like super hidden. Yeah, I might just end up putting the, uh, I might just end up putting that piece of tube in here. That way it, it makes this nice and rigid and that'll hold the tube and then I can just weld off that. Shit, I don't know. All right, it's another day. Today's Wednesday. Yesterday was Tuesday. Quick maths. So uh, before we continue, I need to build a quick extra workbench. Is there more? Damn, I did. Now, before we get started on resuming the car, I do need a, like a big table. I want a big roll around table that I can set tubes and metal and whatnot on and kind of like pre-plan or draw on or maybe even cut on. I I'm gonna need something that I can use for my plasma cutter. I'm not gonna use wood, but I do have other ideas. We'll, we'll get to that when it comes time. But basically I'd like to just build a big roll around uh, worktop table for like metal working or, or other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like a big four foot by eight. Basically just one of these. I do need to build a welding table or like a plasma cutting table soon. I'm also supposed to be get a plasma cutter uh, CNC machine, but I'm trying really hard not to spend too much money, man. I'm, I'm going broke trying to get this place like up and running. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, just, just real quick, not gonna take a whole lot of time. I'm just gonna build a big four by eight workbench that I can roll around. gonna serve as like the fabrication side of the shop so if I want to do any like the tube bending or like the chopping you know I got this is just gonna be like that side specifically for it so I got the you know the working on the car side there fabrication side here I think this is gonna be a good way to like keep everything separated and clean I can still store cars over here all I have to do to take this thing out is I'm gonna do three bolts the whole tube bender comes right up but it is mounted to the ground so I'll do the engine building stuff over there. I'll do the fabrication stuff over here just to do that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and the whole bench rolls around so I can kind of bring that anywhere I need it to be in the shop when I use it. I'll probably use that right now to, to do uh, my plasma cutting on. I'm not gonna use it to cut directly on the wood. You guys will see what I'm talking about when it comes time. Where did we stop yesterday? I don't know. Let's go check it out. All right, so I started yesterday chopping away the floor pan because I wanted to see kind of like what I was working against. And this is also gonna help me get an idea of like where I'm gonna start building my cage and how I'm gonna start doing that. I have one of two options, at least the ones that I've been thinking about. I've been thinking about either A, running the main harness bars uh, that basically dictate where the roll cage is on either side or, or the chassis is on either side. Uh, whether or not I want to run them inside of this fender here, I guess it would be your bottom side skirt, your rockers, your kickers, pick a turn. The one thing I thought about doing was running the lower chassis tubes through here and kind of hiding it in here. I think that'd be really cool. I think that'd be like, keep it as low key as possible. The, the, the cage of the chassis, I thought that'd be kind of cool. So put the tubes here, the uh, main hoop kind of come out here, connect over here that obviously shoot out back into that side as well. It basically is just in, it's cut in as, as deep as it can be. At least that's what I was thinking anyway. Problem with that is, I don't know if I'll have enough room for my front tubes that connect to the top of the frame. I don't know if it'll have enough room to clear all of this crap, play with it a little bit, but I, I think that'll work. So I guess I'll finish cutting out here and uh, the metal back here, and then we'll start putting our tube in here and, and get an idea of how we're gonna weld it all together. And this isn't rusty or anything, so I think I can get away with using the plasma cutter. So now I just got done uh, finishing up kind of our preliminary cuts for the, the tube chassis to kind of roll in through the bottom here. Right, I know it looks like a shit mess, but it'll get better, I promise. Just using the plasma cutter, I roughly cut out this whole thin sheet metal 
that just kind of like pinches together and it all kind of welds together. But I think what I'll do is I'll run our base tube through this channel here. This connects through here. So the tube will lay in here, go along this whole hollow channel, and then out here. And then weld in a, uh, a quarter inch piece of steel on either side. Uh, essentially just put in a quarter inch plate here and weld it all the way around, and that'll be our mounting just for the tube for right now. And that'll just kind of connect the tube to the actual chassis. I'll do the exact same thing on the other side, and then we'll start building our cage. Cool. favorite part about fabricating stuff is the fact that you can kind of just make up your own measurements, right? Like it's all, it's all yours. I mean, I do have to follow a, a general structure because I am rebuilding a car, right? But like the one thing about fabricating stuff that's always kind of appealed to me is the fact that it doesn't, does it hardcore matter? 63 inches of tube. That's going to give me plenty of room back here for, uh, for air if I need it, you know? Cut me 62 inches. tube cut which is a uh, perfect size of course because I'm awesome now I just need to weld in a, a stopper here and then a stopper here that's gonna kind of close off this hole I'm gonna make this out of quarter inch steel use some old-school tricks I'm gonna use some cardboard which thankfully I have a ton of because I'm always needing parts and stuff so I'm just gonna take some cardboards draw some designs clean up where I need to, uh, to weld it in yeah That didn't work. So our little pieces, uh, which are molded to the inner channel, it goes right in place. Nice. Put this bad boy back here. That'll be our stopper plate. And then we'll send this thing through the body. And our other plate goes on the back side. Also to get things started, I'm gonna tack this end piece in place. We've got uh, the rear tube just kind of tacked in place there against the body. It runs all the way along underneath here. And then 
right here. Uh, I'll definitely have to beat this up in the future. I'm just using this as a place right now to kind of like start our cage and build off of because the floor is so rotten that I can't really start mounting. <clears throat> the floor is so rotten and so is the frame that I can't really start mounting things to it. There's different ways I could do this. I could cut the whole body off of this thing, put on like a, a frame jig, probably add like another month worth of work to this thing. But I think I can do it like this. I think I can pull the old Indiana Jones switcheroo where I just swap the bottom out from underneath it and just kind of go from there. But I have to start moving on. I gotta go ahead and cut out the rest of this floor pan. Uh, so I've got a couple pieces of just square stock here. Not particularly strong, but it is structural. And I'll just throw a couple of pieces right between the back and the front. Make sure that both of these stay nice and square because I'm about to cut out the rest of the floor pan. Cool, I think that'll hold it for a little while, for sure. Now it's time to cut the rest of the floors out. being able to work inside the car like this. Maybe I should cut the floor out of stuff more often. is gonna end today's video. I feel like we've made some decent progress, like, mmm. Okay, so like, on paper, all I did was cut the floors out and then like kinda weld in a tube, right? But there's a lot more work that goes into that and I hope you guys see that. I'm doing my best to, sh to show that. Like, there's a lot of pre-planning, all that kind of crazy shit you gotta do to, to make this work. Which brings me to my next point because, uh, like, which brings me to my next point. Consistency is gonna change a little bit. Like, the way things are going and the way things should be going, uh, this could take probably like weeks to start completing the subframe and in the floors and stuff like that. I don't know how long it's gonna take me to do that, but, but I feel like I'm learning really quick. And as I progress, I will accelerate in my abilities. But I think what I'm gonna do is update you guys with videos as much as possible. Right, which is always the hard part for me because like I feel like if I don't make enough progress I should just push it to like make a bigger video But I think right now everyone's kind of vibing like more content. That's what we go with right now I have no worries because I feel like if they start to suck you guys will let me know pretty good at that Like I think I got that right like that's always the weird point when you're tackling a new project You're like do I have this? Can I do this? You kind of hit that like, can I do this moment? That happened right about last time I kicked out my windshield. Boy, I sure hope I have this under control. Things are things are going good, man. I appreciate everyone's support. Y'all y'all been 10 out of 10, except for you. And you know who I'm talking to. Man, I gotta be, I gotta be better about earplugs. I can't, I can't hear shit. Except for this like crazy ringing. I've really upped my eye protection. You know, I feel like I feel like my eye protection game is pretty okay. I want a face shield, but they're fucking sold out. Anyway, now now I'm rambling. Uh, you know what, how about before the video ends, we do like a little, uh, like a little closure. Let's see where we're at for the day.
So obviously, this thing, I'm pretty happy with the way this thing turned out considering I basically ran out of wood. But I threw my big old six inch vise on this thing. It'll be great for working with tube and stuff like that and just kind of laying stuff out. Something this big, I should have gone with like omnidirectional casters all the way around. Front ones, I was like, I'll just steer it like my workbench. But with something this big, man, it'd be nice to be able to swing it front and back. I'm kind of having to park this big motherfucker anywhere I can. As for the car, I'm actually Please just punch about this idea. I think this is gonna work out really well. Especially, like this part isn't structural or anything like that, but this part will be. It'll be welded directly into the body and the frame. And when we get to like bending the tubes and stuff like that, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. There's a lot of math and science involved, I don't feel like. But this is really interesting. So these are the frame rails, right? But since I don't have any weight in the front and it's bolted in about 17 other places, when it comes to doing the frame rails, I got some two by four square stock that still isn't here yet, by the way. But I'll probably just chop this right here, weld in the square stock, go it all the way to here, weld that in place, not weld it, weld it, but like tack it in place. Do that on both sides, create my frame rails, have them kind of hover here and then build to them. But that's, uh, that's where I'm gonna end today's video, man. I really wanna say thank you guys for watching and supporting the channel as much as you guys have. Things are weird, views are down, but who cares, man? I'm having the time of my life, but y'all's response has been like 10 out of 10. Y'all could help a Dan out by sharing the video, you know, give it a quick share, like, share it, you know, all that other shit. That sure would help me be able to like, that sure would help me finish up the shop getting put together if I had a little bit, just a little bit more, more help. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll continue cracking this thing apart for, for a little while longer. Then once I feel confident enough to start tearing apart the 73 again and do the exact same thing, we'll do that. <laughs>